Welcome to this edition of Ethical Sustainable Investment News and Analysis to Profit By. I'm Ron Robbins, an ethical investing pioneer for over 40 years, quoted in the Wall Street Journal, Market Watch, The Globe and Mail, and numerous other media, and founder of the highly respected global ethical sustainable investing information website, Investing for the Soul. And please listen to my disclosure, disclaimer statement at the end of this podcast. Now enjoy this podcast. Hello, Ron Robbins here. Welcome to my podcast, Ethical and Sustainable Investing News to Profit By for November 8th, 2019. Presented by Investing for the Soul. Investingforthesoul.com is your site for vital global ethical and sustainable investing news, commentary, information, and resources. And Google any terms that are unfamiliar to you. Also, you can find a full transcript, live links to content, and often bonus material to these podcasts at the episode's podcast page located at investingforthesoul.com forward slash podcasts. Now to this podcast. For U.S. investors, Barbara Friedberg writes about her seven best socially responsible mutual funds. Now her seven picks are Vanguard FTSE, that's F-T-S-E, Social Index Fund Admiral Shares. She says about that fund, with nearly 500 companies, financials, healthcare, technology, industrials, and consumer services, are the most highly represented sectors. It has a 0.14% expense ratio, and this green mutual fund offers a 1.6% yield. The 21.1% year-to-date return is higher than the category performance, end quote. Her second choice is Parnassus Endeavor Fund. Quoting her, she says, the Parnassus Endeavor Fund seeks out companies with excellent workplace environments and avoids fossil fuel investments. Year-to-date returns of 21.2%, really good, end quote. The really good part was my added commentary. Three, PACS Elevate Global Women's Leadership Fund. About this fund, Ms. Friedberg says, research indicates that companies with greater numbers of women in leadership roles have better performance across multiple factors, says Daniel Kern, Chief Investment Officer of TFC Financial Management in Boston. The fund sports a reasonable expense ratio of 0.56% and a 1.9% dividend yield. End quote. Fourth is the Calvert Bond Fund, about which she writes, Top holdings include U.S. Treasury notes and bonds, as well as issues from Freddie Mac, Avis Budget Rental Car, Citigroup, and International Finance Corporation. Launched in 1987, the fund has an 8.2% year-to-date return. End quote. Her fifth pick, Calvert International Opportunities Fund. Ms. Friedberg comments on this fund that it holds fewer companies exposed to fossil fuels, carbon emissions, and tobacco than do companies included in the MSCI EAFE Small and Mid-Cap Index. The fund enjoys an 11.4% year-to-date return. The expense ratio is a hefty 1.35%, but with a 1.32% yield. End quote. Six. Pick Fidelity U.S. Sustainability Index Fund. Concerning this fund, Ms. Friedberg says it targets large to mid-capitalization U.S. companies with high ESG scores. 
the fund has a 1.1% yield and a rock bottom expense ratio of 0.11%. The 21% year to date return slams the 18.9% category average. End quote. And finally, the Ave Maria Bond Fund. Quoting Ms. Freeberg on this fund, she writes, Winner of the 2019 Lipper Fund Award for Best of 42 A-Rated Corporate Bond Funds. The Ave Maria family is the largest U.S. Catholic mutual fund family. The year-to-date return is 6.5%, with a moderate expense ratio of 0.5%. The current yield is 1.8%, lower than many corporate bond funds, likely due to the inclusion of stocks within the portfolio. End quote. Now I'm going to cover a piece about robo-advisors. The reference will be to U.S. robo-advisors. A few of these advisors might be operational in other countries too. Well, it seems that not everyone can agree on the best robo-advisors, though some recommendations do overlap. On my September 27, 2019 podcast, Investopedia recommended M1 Finance, Motif Investing, Interactive Advisors, Personal Capital. Now, in this article by Barbara Friedberg, titled five best robo-advisors for managing ESG funds. She recommends M1 Finance, Betterment, Earthfolio, Wealth Simple, Motif Impact Portfolios. For robo-advisor descriptions, go to the article's link on this edition's podcast page. This is the second article by Ms. Friedberg I've covered in this podcast, She's obviously performing excellent work for the ethical and sustainable investing community. So, in this podcast, we've so far covered the best ethical and sustainable investing funds and robo-advisors. Now, let's talk a little bit about the best ethical and sustainable investing stocks. Brendan Kofi, in a Forbes post titled, Here are fund managers favorite ESG stocks can help us in this regard. He also explains in this post how he went about his research. Here are the top 10 stocks he found in the funds. Microsoft, the Walt Disney Company, Alphabet Inc., Danaha Corp., Mastercard, Verisk Analytics Inc., Lindy PLC, American Express Company, and Costco Wholesale Corp. His post is replete with a discussion about the pros and cons of many companies held by these funds, so his post is well worth a read. If you're looking for dividends and yield possibilities in renewable energy companies, you should read Matthew DeLelo's Motley Fool article titled One Renewable Energy Growth Story That Dividend Investors Won't Want to Overlook. The growth story, he says, is that quote, with today's larger wind turbines able to generate more power, wind farm operators are increasingly looking to repower legacy operations. It also certainly helps that they can earn higher returns on investment with these projects, which will allow them to increase their dividends. That's why income-focused investors won't want to overlook this key trend. Here's what he says about three leading companies engaged in this sector. He first writes about Terraform Power. Mr. Delalu says that Terraform Power currently has three repowering projects under development. The company would replace turbines built about a decade ago with newer ones that have larger rotors, enabling them to produce 25 to 30 percent 
more power than the existing ones. He adds, the company could increase its payout towards the higher end of its 5-8% to annual target range through 2020 thanks to these wind repowering projects. End quote. His second pick is Next Era Energy Partners. About this company, he writes, Next Era Energy Partners also has some wind repowering projects underway. These investments will generate more than a 10% return on investment, helping grow the cash flow, and increases Next Era Energy Partners' ability to grow its dividend toward the high end of its 12% to 15% annual range through 2024. End quote. His final choice is Patton Energy, which he says is working on a project to repower its Gulf wind facility. The project is an essential piece of the company's strategy to reduce its dividend payout ratio from 99% last year to a more comfortable 80% by the end of 2020. Once it achieves that targeted level, it could start growing its dividend once again." End quote. Now Todd Schreiber has a written a post titled Three Clean Energy ETFs for a Brighter Future on the Investor Place site. He says that, I quote, These clean energy ETFs have been winners this year and will keep that bullishness going into 2020." End quote. First of the three ETFs Mr. Schreiber writes about is iShares Global Clean Energy ETF. About this ETF, he says, it is one of the oldest and largest green energy ETFs. In fact, iShares Global Clean Energy ETF, which debuted in mid 2008 has $376.2 million in assets under management, making it the second largest green energy ETF overall." End quote. The second ETF is the ALPS, that's A-L-P-S, Clean Energy ETF, about which he says, it's about 16 months old, making it one of the newer members of the green energy ETF competition. But the fund has been a stud since coming to market. This year's gain of more than 22% proves as much." End quote. The third pick is the Global X Yield Co. and Renewable Energy Income ETF, which he says has a trailing 12-month dividend yield of 3.46% adding that, these days, that's sturdy, regardless of asset class, and then remarks that the dividend buffer keeps Global X Yield Co. and Renewable Energy Income ETFs volatility low relative to standard green energy ETFs. However, that hasn't weighed on performance, as the fund is higher by more than 11% year-to-date. End quote. So these are my top news stories and tips for ethical and sustainable investors over the past two weeks. Again, to get all the links or to read the transcript of this podcast and sometimes get additional information too, please go to investingforthesoul.com forward slash podcasts and scroll down to this episode and be sure to click the like and subscribe buttons in iTunes, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you download or listen to this podcast. And please click the share buttons to share this podcast with your friends and family. That way you can help promote not only this podcast, but ethical and sustainable investing globally, and help create a better world for us all. Please don't hesitate to contact me if you have any questions about the content of this podcast or anything else related. A big thank you for listening. 
come again. And my next podcast is scheduled for November 22nd. See you then. Bye for now. Learn how to create a simple portfolio reflecting your personal values by taking my one-hour tutorial. Go to investingforthesoul.com forward slash podcasts and click the link in the right-hand column for my DIY Ethical Sustainable Investing Pays tutorial. Now, I'll mention in the podcast if I have any direct interest or holdings in companies or securities I'm talking about. Furthermore, any news, opinions, analysis or other information offered by myself, as well as references and information to or from other external sources in this podcast, is provided as general market information and should not be relied upon and thus does not constitute investment advice. Investors should consult their own licensed investment professional before making investments. Also, I will not accept liability for any loss or damage, including without limitation any loss of profit, which may arise directly or indirectly from use of or reliance on information in this podcast. Do contact me at ron r at investingforthesoul.com. Signing off, this is Ron Robbins.